learn how to automatically create Google Calendar events based on Google Sheets data. Jane is the person in charge of the planning of the community management. So let's say here at Ciparis, we have a lot of different social media channels and different people are in charge at different times or are responsible to answering to the questions, um, the comments, and so on and so forth. And we see there, there's a little plan here. And what we want to do is in the demo, uh, where is it? Yeah, it's just choose the demo team vacation. That's okay. We want it to pop up there. We want the plan to pop up over there. Okay, so how do we proceed? First up, we start the IDE. Tools, script editor. That's gonna load the script editor. And first things first, we're going to name our project. Um, I don't know, let's call it automate calendar. There you go. Go ahead and rename that. And then um, we're not gonna leave it on the, or leave this name here, my function. Instead, we're going to rename this to create calendar event. There you go. The rest we're going to leave like so. Now we need to access our calendar. Uh, how do we do so? So let's head over here and over to settings. And if we go down to, where is it? Demo team vacation. As I said, well, we will just be using that. What we're interested in is this here, the calendar ID. Go ahead, select that, copy it, because we will be needing that ID, that code. And we're going to save it under community calendar. And we need to access the calendar app service. There you go. So I'm gonna head and choose this. And then dot get calendar by, well, guess what? By ID, because that's what we just copied. And we need to pass that in like so. And let's close that out. Very good. So now we have our calendar. We have access to the calendar. Now we need access to our sheet. We're going to store that in a variable called sheet under the spreadsheet app service. Um, if you don't know what calendar app and spreadsheet app is, these are services that we can use in Google Apps Script. I have a video on that that I will be linking right about now. So have a look at that if you want to find out what this is all about and how you can use and interact it. Okay. Get, uh, this time we're gonna use get active sheet. So that's the current sheet I'm on. Which one is that? Well, that's this one. This is the sheet. Huh? So also this is something to keep in mind. This is a spreadsheet. The whole document is a spreadsheet. And this is one specific sheet and we will be getting the active sheet. So there where our cursor is on. And then we're going to do the following. We're going to say, get the schedule. Fun word, depending on where you're from, you say schedule or schedule. Let me know what do you, how do you pronounce it in the comment section below? So sheet, oops, my mistake, sheet dot. And then we're going to get the data range. So that's this method here that we can use that goes Oh, wrong. That goes and gets um, the whole range that contains data. So that is to make sure that I'm getting everything. So especially if I do not know how many rows will I have, how many columns, it's okay. Just use get data range and it will get all of it. And then we want to get out the values. We want to read the values, not value, but instead values since multiple columns and rows. And then we're going to do the following schedule or schedule splice zero and two. What does that do? Well, in um, my videos, I mentioned time and time again that Apps Script is essentially JavaScript. And splice is one of the methods that we use we can use in JavaScript. So if you're interested in finding out more about it, just go ahead and Google 
JavaScript splice method or just JavaScript splice. That should be good enough too. So what we're doing here, just to give you a short um, intro or let you know why I'm using this, I'm getting all of the data here, which is awesome. That's my data range here. Great. But if I'm wanting to create calendar events based on the data here, I have no use for this, for the, the big header and the subheader here, the, the header of the, of the columns. What I'm looking for is to get the data here. So that's why I'm using splice to say in the zeroth position of the array, um, the zeroth position of the array, which will be in a, the array, you will have each row as a position. Get rid of position one and two. I don't need those. And keep the following. So keep the following rows. That's what we're doing with splice. We're just getting all of the data and just saying, okay, so I know the two first ones are headers. They're not useful for creating any events. Do away with them. That's what I'm using the splice method for. The splice method also takes other parameters. So I said, if you want to find out a bit more in depth on how to use this, maybe in your special situation or specific situation, then go ahead and Google JavaScript splice. Learn how to automate tasks, processes, and data handling in Google Sheets. Head over to courses.saparis.io and check out our Google Sheets automation course. Now, before going any further with our automation script, I want to quickly um, have you look at the format I'm using for the date and start time because it's not good enough for me to schedule, um, you know, a whole day event. Instead, I want to have here um, this, let's say, Jane be the community manager in charge from 7 until 12, and then from 12 until 10. So this is using, using the... the not American way of writing the 24 hour format of writing hours. Um, so I want to split this up. So in this case, I'm expecting to have two separate calendar events, one running from seven to 12 and one from 12 to 10 and I'm combining it with the date. And you see up here, so it's the first of June, 2021 from seven and the end will be the first of June, 2021 until 12. Um, again, here in European countries, we tend or we typically will write the day first and then the month. That's why you see one stands for the day and six for the month. How did I get that specific format? I used format uh, number, more formats, more date and format times. Down here, I found this and I thought, hey, that's exactly what I'm using for, uh, what I'm looking for. This one here, that's the one I chose. So here, by the way, this is also highly configurable if you need to create your own format, go ahead and do so. I just found that this one works really well for the use case I have here for this example. So day, month, hour, minute. Okay, perfect. So we've applied that. Now let's head back into our code because we've only written half of what we need. Um, now we have to actually start creating the events because we've gotten hold of the calendar, uh, the sheet, we've got the data, and now we have to actually create these events. So I'm going to say schedule, which you remember the schedule contains the separate rows from our Google Sheets with the actual schedule. So schedule, and I'm going to use a for each loop function entry curly brackets and that doesn't belong there. Let me cut that out and paste it down here. That looks better. Good. So now what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, on every single row, do the following. So the schedule is everything or so like, so everything and on each iteration, so I'm looping through on each iteration entry stands for this and then this, and then this. So schedule the whole thing entry stands kind of like as a placeholder for every line or excuse me, every row we will be looping through. And we're going to say 
community calendar. There you go. Please create an event. There you go. By the way, autocomplete, awesome thing. Love it. And we're going to, and you see here again, this, this is awesome. If you use the create event, you're going to have to pass in the title. So the title of the event, the start time and the end time. Okay. We have all that information. Awesome. So let's pass it in. Entry to entry zero and entry one. And if you're asking yourself, what is she writing? Then here is the explanation. So remember, this is going to be the title. This is the start date or the start time and the end of that event. So two, zero, one. Hmm? Two, zero, one. What that means is we will be creating on the first iteration an event called Jane with this start and this end. And on the second iteration, so on the second looping through this data, Adam, start time and time. I mean, that's a theory. We still have to test if it works, but that's what we're doing here. So we're looping over this data and this is um, a way to access data in an array, because what we're having here is essentially an array. That's how this is saved. And this is position zero, position one, and position two. And that's exactly what I'm seeing here. On every iteration looping through, the title get the value of what's ever in position two, so index two, the start time index zero, and the end time index one. That's because in a race, so in computer language, you usually start counting at zero. That's why it's zero, one, two. Okay, so far so good. Let me make sure, ah, oh, already saved it. Okay, well, now it's time to test our code. Let's make sure that we have to create calendar, select it as um, the function we want to execute, and let's hit run. Feeling a little bit nervous. Let's see if it works. Down here, the execution log appears. So that's our first hint if something goes wrong or not. Review permissions, yes, by all means. I permit, or Google, uh, no, Jane, permits this code to run to access the calendar huh? because we're accessing the, or using the calendar app service. So, you know, we have to grant access here. So in order for that to work, execution started, that's a good sign. So that means, Probably no syntax errors. Execution completed. Okay. Oh, what happened? Let's have a look. Let's go over to our calendar. So you remember the first entry should be on the 1st of, of uh, June at 7 in the morning. Let's have a look. 1st of June's. Wow, there you go. Jane, Adam, Laura. Jane, Adam, Laura. Awesome. It worked. It worked like a charm. No problem. Here you go. There's the code. You need to automate something like that. You need to create, maybe, I don't know, for your school, for your work, for workshops you're planning. You need to add a bunch of calendar um, events. Then no problem. Go ahead. Use this code. You need to invite people. No problem because you can add the invitees, the email addresses as uh, as parameters here. All you have to do is check the documentation. That's something I say over and over again. Check how to use the create event method and you'll find out this is super useful and will save you a bunch of time. Believe me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and share it with your friends, with your colleagues. Go ahead and reuse this, this uh, code. I'm, I'm happy to share it with you. And um, do check out the other App Script video tutorials we have here on this channel. And go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well so that you never miss out on any of these video tutorials, also concerning Gmail, Google Drive, and so on and so forth. <music>